And I know this museum is going around beyond the European world. You can actually check, check it out and you'll find that it's a collection that's touring. Uh, maybe Singapore should bring it in one day. It's a collection of failed products. And he said that uh, the whole purpose is to show that innovation requires failure. There's no uh, uh, a bullet that's so silver that the moment you embark onto an innovation, you get it right. So he, he, he put this all together and uh, he wants to provide business a learning experience. So therefore, indeed, through failure, we learn and learning is part of education. In fact, learning is the key thing in education. And interestingly, in the products, there is one that is by our famous T, Donald Trump. So if you were to go to <laughs> that uh, museum, you will see failed products, including this. And uh, he came up with a card game, and I like the, the Dr. West. He said it's a boring version of Monopoly. It's simplified so stupid that people can play. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know what he's trying to reflect, but anyway, it was uh, uh, a failure. It's called I'm back and you're fired. Okay, so come, come, come to the quotes. And uh, this is uh, a motivation speaker. Uh, he, he talked about failure should be our teacher. I highlighted nothing, 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 because uh, a lot of people say uh, doing nothing is the only way to not make mistakes. Uh, but we all know, you and I know that that is, uh, that is unacceptable in our world. If you do nothing, nothing happens, so it won't exist in a sense, right? And uh, this is an educationist. He, 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 he promoted a lot about uh, 21st century teachings and so on. And uh, he said that if you're not prepared to be wrong, you'll never come up with anything original. And originality is something that is important. It's about innovativeness, it's about creativity. And original means you come up with something that people have never seen before, you can solve problems. And we need original things. But it doesn't mean that common thing, well-tested uh, uh, solutions are not good. Uh, here we are talking about breakthrough, about innovation. And part of education is to, is to teach people and to make people creator of Solutions, and this is the the. I don't think he's an actor. Is he an actor? Yes. He's an actor. Is he? Yeah, because I, I don't follow. I, I don't quite follow. Right? But I thought the name sounded like an actor. Uh, that is very famous. Mm -hmm. Anyway, success not a good teacher. Failure makes you humble. And I think humility is very important. If all of us are always successful, and we never face failure, we will never be humble enough to want to learn. And pride is always the beginning of downfall. Okay, so uh, the, there's a Chinese word that say, if you are proud, you will surely fail. So uh, I don't go into stories because I know I only have 10 minutes. And Mr. Churchill talk about uh, one failure leads to another failure if you keep doing it with enthusiasm. So enthusiasm is the motivation behind why you keep trying, trying, trying. I think that's the biggest spirit as well that we want to succeed, we want to try things out. So um, the attitude of not bowing down to failure, but to look at it like what C.S. Lewis put it. Uh, he's the one that gave us the book of Narnia and, and, and uh, he's a very famous writer, right? Uh, failures are finger posts on the road to achievement. I think these are all uh, very motivational and we should use this in our teaching. And I, I also like this uh, by uh, Eloise Ristat. I couldn't find the photograph. Apparently, the photograph is not in the public domain and uh, she has passed away long ago. Uh, I like this because when we allow ourselves to fail, when we, when, we, when we give ourselves permission to fail, we at the same time give ourselves permission to excel. It's very liberating. Uh, I think now in Singapore, many students are under stress. Uh, I, I, I know that many students there's a trend of students going to depression, even taking their own life, because they cannot face failure. The expectation of them to excel is so great that um, they, they, they are not liberated. They are, in, in a way, be clamped down. And uh, 21st century skill sets want our people to learn, to be creative, to be able to think critically, to be able to communicate, to be able to collaborate. And in all these so-called four Cs, they're bound to be uh, uh, failures. Failures are part and parcel of all these things. 
the, the why you are why you are why you need to think critically because along the way something not quite right. You want to analyze and crit criticize the process and so on. You need to communicate because you do not communicate. Again, communication is important to overcome communication breakdown, which is again a failure in the, in, the, in the collaborative processes and so on. And these are indeed the desired outcome of why at the Science Center we, 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 we push for STEM applied learning programs. And uh, I, I like my STEM ELP colleagues to mingle and introduce yourself to, to our, our foreign guests, especially, uh, so that they may know a little bit more about this. Uh, and, and later you'll see some of our students taking part in the bigger band. They are in this STEM applied learning program. And the, the mindset behind the, the STEM Applied Learning Program, ALP, is actually a maker culture. And uh, we want to impart certain skill sets which will feed back to the 21st century skill sets. Uh, we want to teach them electronics, we teach them robotics, we teach them programming, and we teach them design thinking. And all these are very participatory. Again, back, back to the 21st century skill sets. In this age and era, nobody can work alone. Even if you are a greatest inventor, you need to tap on others' wisdom. So this is uh, the kind of movement that we are pushing for the schools to adopt. And uh, again, to de-emphasize the need to excel in exam grade, this program has got no examination. And how do we know that the students uh, acquire the skill sets? After the so-called tier one program, they're encouraged to take on projects. And the projects are really multidisciplinary uh, solutioning to a task, a challenge given to them. And the students use this to show that they understand, they apply, and along the way of doing these projects, inevitably they will fail, they will face failure. If you don't, if you don't face failures, the challenge is not a challenge at all. So, uh, the maker culture embraces failure, and, uh, and, and learning from mistakes is, is part and parcel, it's important, and it's also important to learn not to make the same mistake again and again. Therefore, common sense must come in. And uh, this is a, a funny quote about failure, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's a twist to words. If you fail to stand up, continue, you fail to stand up, continue. But sometimes uh, we forget about common sense. So this quote is to remind us that uh, sometimes we think that we need to be so clever, so innovative to solve a problem, but actually what we need is just a little bit of common sense. Uh, I gave a talk many years ago about creativity and innovation. And I say sometimes the most downplayed factor is I won't tell you a story. I don't know that. So this is, uh, I thought, good to remind ourselves that uh, the problem is simply because we forgot about common sense. I'm coming towards the end, really. Uh, and, and, and I think when we talk about how failures shape our education, I think we also, in a way, have a thought process in, yeah, when we face failure in our education process, what can we do? And uh, these are the five steps that I put up. I think we certainly need to reevaluate our planning. Probably the planning process is not good. Uh, that's why uh, every time after Maker Fair, we have a post mortem, I'll tell you, hey, this one, uh, you didn't do quite good the last time. Next time, we need to that. Because planning has got some problem there. And uh, preparation as well, we need to reevaluate your preparation, your execution, you also need to look at it. And then we focus on variables in our control. What about, what, what, what do you mean by variables in our control means uh, uh, things that you can take charge. Like, for example, can we uh, house more than 200 people in this small room? We cannot, right? So, so we have to uh, control how many people we can admit in, but we can control how big this room is. So this is something that, being a scientist, you know what are variables that you can control, what are something that you want to control. You can control the weather to say, hey, don't rain when we are bigger bear, right? So, so this is important. And I think this is something uh, which I like to emphasize on, that is sometimes the mistake is not really a mistake. The mistake is actually a discovery. I'm going to tell you about 3M, right, the post-it pad. They wanted to make the most strongest adhesive materials turn out to be neither here nor there, but it turned around and become a very best seller, the 3M post-it pad. Penicillin. The, the, if if, if uh, Flamik didn't look at the, the result, just throw away, throw away, throw away, and not discover that indeed there's something happening in there, you will know antibiotics. Okay, so so although experimental failure, but because of that, it pointed towards uh, new discovery. And the 999 over 1000, the famous Thomas Edison, right? 
didn't fail 999 times. I discovered 999 ways of not doing things to make my end product. And very often, the kind of failure we face are part and parcel of really leading towards the, the outcome we want. And that's why we have annual trials. That's why we have uh, modeling. That's why people are coming to, to design, implementing medicine to, to everybody, their, their clinical trials and so on and so forth. The trial means trial and error. They are, they are bound to be error. So this is my final slide. To err is human. All of us know that. The Chinese words there, the patients in, you are not God. Okay, so all of us bound to make failure, and therefore, not to let failure shape our education is against our human nature. Uh, so, with that, I want to thank you for agreeing with me, <laughs> uh, because uh, it's only human that we make mistakes. And therefore, be kind to ourselves, be kind to our children, be kind to our colleagues. If there are failures, don't have to say you are doomed, you are fired. Okay, not that I'm telling you of fire like uh, Donald Trump style of things, but yes, from failure we learn, and that is how failure shape education. Thank you very much. Thank you, TM. We will hold questions until the panel discussion later. So we learned about failure, and we also looked at how not to look, let failures shape our education. I, I think that was a very apt quote that segues very nicely to what our next speaker will be speaking about. So one of the things that, when we talk about failure these days, I think many of you would have heard of the term that is fail fast. Fail fast, fail forward, fail often. So um, our next speaker is going to be speaking on the topic of how to fail fast with Shenzhen. Uh, he's Mr. David Lee, uh, who is actually the co-founder of Hacked Matter.